that how, how that drives uh, climate change in general. So taking it at a global level, it's impossible to understand. So we've concentrated a lot in our group to try to understand what's going on at an higher scale, in particular in terms of, of land use and in particular in terms of agricultural land use and developing sustainable agricultural systems. So we have 137,000 farmers in the country and foresters managing 75% of the, the, the land base. We're depending on them for our food, fiber, uh, clean water, air, air quality, uh, and our cultural and aesthetic services and the, the land, the beautiful landscapes in which we recreate. So if we want to turn the, the land use system around, we have to concentrate on the common agricultural policy. So we've done a lot of work in trying to map and understand what's the potential of each different land parcel in the country in terms of food, fiber, carbon storage, carbon sequestration, uh, water quality, flood uh, alleviation. And then we've tried to understand that, but what we've done is a step further is, because everything is driven by our, our subsidy system, farmers get paid subsidies to manage their land in a particular way, we've tried to develop a simple 10 point scoring system that basically scores each individual land parcel based on its value for nature, carbon and water in a 10 point uh, system using a, a couple of simple variables. So the way cattle can, our farmers can condition score their cattle, they can condition score a crop and understand what value they're going to get from it. We have this 10 point scoring system that they can now score their land for its environmental services. That has been tried and tested over the last seven or eight years in areas in, in Mayo and the Pearl Muscle Project in the, in the Burn Programme in upland areas of the country. Now that's going to be rolled out on the 1st of January 2023 with 750 million of funding, 20,000 farmers uh, across the country. So this now, as well as the, the market looking after the food and fibre value, we now have a, a, a publicly subsidised uh, nature, carbon and, and water market on this 10 point system. And I think it's, it's going to be the biggest thing that has happened in terms of, of nature conservation and land use management in, in the country in the last uh, uh, 30 years and I think it's going to have big impact across Europe. We're in this results-based payment network in, in Europe as well. We've, in the last week we've had visits from Latvia, Belgium and the UK. Funny enough that the UK have decided to blow their whole common agriculture policy out of the water and start from scratch. Uh, from the discussions last week we're going to be in exactly the same place in 2028. They're going for this uh, public goods payments, uh, so public payments for, for public goods trying to fix the, the, the food markets so that we have affordable food without the negative externality and internalizing that. So these are the, the bigger issues that we're trying to deal with in our, our research group, but we've really concentrated on putting in value uh, on uh, these services that farmers are providing that are valued in the marketplace and trying to use our public funds to do that. So it's, we're hoping to see, there'll be a big announcement, I think, in the next couple of weeks from government and Mayo is going to be one of these pilot areas. There'll be approximately 4,000 farmers in Mayo, over 100,000 hectares in this program on the, in the 1st of January, hopefully, you know, so. It's, Super, we're looking forward it's to seeing that. Yeah, it's great to see that outcome from it from your perspective now. Um, so that concludes our questions here.